All right, Sagar, what's on your radar? Well, a major battle is brewing within the Trump administration, and it exposes one of the central flaws of Trump's presidency. That while he campaigned and has the political inclinations of a populist Republican, many of the people who work for him do not agree with him whatsoever and can do anything they can to do at the bidding of big business. The latest example is a debate over an executive order that would require the federal government to buy medical supplies and pharmaceuticals manufactured in the United States states, aimed at reducing dependency of imports from China and boosting domestic production. Literally sounds like the most uncontroversial action in history, given the absolute mess that we find ourselves in right now in the middle of a pandemic. Just to give you an idea of what the polling on a subject like this is, a Harris poll taken earlier this month showed that 71% of Americans think all companies should pull all manufacturing back from China. And a slight majority even think that China should pay the United States reparations for their cover-up of the coronavirus in the early days. If you pulled medical supplies or pharmaceuticals, I'm certain that the polling would be literally a 90-10 issue. But as you may have guessed it, the 10% probably are almost exclusively corporate and financial CEOs who have a lot of business interests in China. Those within the White House who oppose the order say that it might be better to, quote, wait until an investigation into China's role is completed and are joined by, quote, business leaders close to the White House. A corporatist White House staffer told The Washington Post, quote, nobody except Peter, that's Peter Navarro, wants to slam China over and over again because we're going to need that what China is making, whether it's equipment or a vaccine down the road. You never know. That is the exact line of thinking that stopped Clinton, Bush, and Obama from doing anything about American manufacturing in China, and it's exactly the neoliberal attitude that got us to where we are today. The fact that this executive order is even up for debate during the administration of a president who ran on talking about how skyscrapers went up in Beijing while Detroit factories crumbled is deeply concerning, to say the least. But it's just the latest example of corporate pressure in this White House against the initiatives that would have undoubtedly helped American workers and citizens while penalizing the bottom lines of those who sold out this country with impunity for the last 40 years. This is only the latest departure that we've seen from Trump. Earlier this month, Crystal and I discussed Trump's so-called immigration executive order. The president originally floated the idea that all immigration to the United States should be temporarily suspended and banned amid the pandemic, possibly beyond to protect the wages of American workers, something that makes pretty obvious sense to me and to many of the people who voted for Donald Trump. And yet, when it was unveiled, the order only applied to green card applications for a period of 60 days, and it granted exemptions to guest workers. Who do you think those guest workers work for? You guessed it, giant multinational corporations in the agricultural industry who rely on cheap foreign labor to keep costs low and profits high. Losers are American citizens, and even those guest workers who often work in awful conditions with very little protections. This again, it's a massive departure from the actual will of American voters. Once again, how out of touch is this executive order with with polling? Washington Post University of Maryland poll revealed just yesterday showed that 65% of Americans support, quote, blocking nearly all immigration. The only group split on it are Democratic voters with every other group, ideologies, age cohorts, education levels, income levels, genders, and races showing net support for the ideas. In both cases, the wrong voices are in the room, and if Trump does not start listening to the right ones, he's gonna face some very real problems come November. And I wanted to highlight this, Crystal, because Donald Trump is the China president, right? Like, if there's anything he's ever remembered for in the history books, it'll be the break from neoliberalism and the trade war with China. I'm absolutely convinced of that. I don't think the tweets, any of that other stuff is ever going to, is ever going to, we're going to look back on it and be like, wow, this was the return of geopolitics. This was the return of a new, a, br- a real breaking of neoliberal economic thinking that stranglehold on Washington for 40 years. So the fact that This is even up for debate. But this wasn't issued on, like, day one of the pandemic. That there's a huge fight between the Treasury Secretary and some other elements within the White House against... Uh, against Peter Navarro's order. Again, Peter Navarro, the man who was right on China and called it back in 2006, that's just crazy to me. And that's something that, it's just, 
perfectly highlights. It's the same Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan dynamic, which is right now we're talking about this infrastructure. Trump wants an infrastructure plan. He's wanted a trillion and a half infrastructure plan since day one of his presidency. Mitch McConnell comes out and says, we're going to do a modest infrastructure plan. Yeah. Now, what exactly about the worst economic crisis since the Great Depression calls for modesty? And he's even told out loud, this is according to Axios, they're going to, quote, box out the president on infrastructure. That's when they look at the president and what he actually wants, and not just what he wants, the millions of people who voted for him, right. allegedly of the same party. That's how much they tow to their ideological line. And he's allowed him to get himself to get rolled yes. time yes. and time again. And it is. It's like the ghost of Paul Ryan is still running in this administration. And there are so many examples. I mean, you know, the corporate tax cut is like the that sort of key enough. moment. And the health care plan, frankly, that he just yeah. left it up to the Republicans who'd been there forever saying repeal and replace, repeal and pla replace. Total corporatist mess that ultimately doesn't even pass. And from there, it's been the same thing because those are the people that he is most responsible responsive to and listens closest to. You see it in this crisis. I mean, we tracked from day one how the people that he brought in, mm -hmm. that he was calling on the phone, that he was taking advice from were the titans of industry. They were Wall Street bankers. That was who he wanted to hear from. And that has been reflected in, res in the response. On the China thing, like putting aside however you feel about that mm -hmm. issue, on the political dynamics, you're absolutely right on the polling. Like, by American is yeah. <laughs> so uncontroversial. And it's not like this executive order meant that, oh, they have to start manufacturing here, right? It was, like, gradually yeah, over, over time. time. I mean, it's, like, weak tea to start with. And then there's a total meltdown within the administration on an issue that I am certain you are right is a 90-10 <laughs> issue because, of course, we should have the ability to supply our own medical mm -hmm. supplies and essentials and many other things, by the way. Food supply is another one that I would throw in there as well. And it's ironic, the defense, because it's like, you know, these neoliberals uh, in the Democratic Party and in the Republican Party are the ones who allowed all that stuff to go over to China. And now that it's there, the argument is, well, we can't make them mad because they have all our stuff. Like, we need them. Well, you're the one who created that dependency. Yeah, and it just shows you how much they will fight even the slightest threat to their power. I mean, viewers of the show, this show know this, which is that, yeah, you're right. If they, if they were like, by next year, Everything's back in the United States. Okay. You know, that's a reasonable thing you can fight somebody on. Yeah. But the fight is over. They're like, no, 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 no. We are 100 committed percent committed to China. We don't care that they steal our intellectual property. We don't care because guess what? We're making all kinds of money. Right. My shareholder profits and my dividends and the, uh, the stock buybacks and all that stuff. That's what the name of the game is, folks. So if the White House even showed, because that's why they look at it, which is if you give them even an inch, if you say, okay, we'll, we'll commit to a little bit of this, they know forever that their supply chains in China are threatened. Right. And remember this, that already the, the, I think it's Shanghai's U.S., the Chamber of Commerce there has surveyed U.S. firms. Most of them don't want to come back. They don't want to bring supply chains back. They That's have not. zero plans to do anything after what has happened here because, again, they don't care. And their interests are not aligned mm -hmm. with ours. The only person who's supposed to advocate for our interests is the government. And, it, and you know, it's, that's why I know why I put that immigration thing in there as well because immigration and trade are the two issues why Donald Trump is president. There's no question about it. That's Those are the two central issues that spoke to and changed the coalitions within the parties, and it is why he's president of the United States. And if he's backtracked now hardcore on the immigration front with this, like, 60-day green card thing, which, as we talked about, no matter which way you look at it, is bad. Because yeah. if you look at it from a restrictionist point of view, ridiculous, because it still lets people compete with low-wage workers. And if you look at it from a humane point of view, these guest workers get treated terribly. The they don't get paid. It's the most exploitative part of the immigration part of system. System. That is most controversial on the left and very much opposed yes. by, you know, the real left. No, and, uh, and like, let's think about the politics of it. They are trying to launch their campaign on the issue of China, yeah. right? I mean, that is how they're going after Joe Biden. Mm. Joe Biden hit back with his own ad. And when you do things like this, you give Biden a lot to work with to muddy the waters and say, mm, you haven't been so you great on this issue. You aren't actually with the American people and where they are in this issue. It allows you get to get to the more hawkish, hawkish China position um, if you are the Biden campaign, and that's part of the problem. I would add, so you laid out immigration mm. and trade as the key issues. I would add one other issue that was central to Trump's election, which is that he sends everybody in this town into, like, total, complete sure. meltdown. Like, people love that. I don't blame them. It's very satisfying to watch. On that one thing, he has definitely delivered. Yes, he has On delivered. On the other two <laughs> actual policy issues, <laughs> he has not. 
been able to get it together because he is he has been so easily sort of rolled, manipulated, overwhelmed by the forces of corporatism in this town. And look, it's not an easy thing to fight. No. Mitch McConnell is probably the savviest operator in the entire country and in this mm -hmm. town. So when that is your adversary and he has this very standard issue corporatist view, that's a hard thing to go up against. But ultimately, it comes back to the president. This is always a problem with change candidates is they talk a big game on the campaign trail and then they get to D.C. and they find out, oh, it's not so hard. I mean, I remember Obama. He's talking about like, oh, we're going to do health care. We're going to do he's like, we're going to pass a lobbying bill. And he came in and hired all these Clinton people because those are the only people around. And then he gets rolled, basically gets rolled by his own administration. And in, in, in time, begins to just like morph into one of them. Trump, I mean, has I would argue against, he was always one of them. Maybe Go he ahead. was always one of them. But, you know, with Trump, I mean, it's the same thing, which is he came in and say, with health care. The mistake that he made was actually thinking that Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell and many of the other people who were talking about repeal and replace Obamacare were actually telling the truth when they said they wanted to repeal and replace Obamacare. Right. That's the farce, which is, as I explained here, so many of these people never had any intention of doing what they said because— do you know how easy it is to just raise money and be like, we need to fight back against Barack Obama on Obamacare. Please send me $5 in the mail to my scam nonprofit. They go through that over and over, and they can make millions of dollars. Yes. And that is, I mean, this is Democrats, this is Republicans. They care far more about that than they ever do on delivering anything they said. Yep, it works out for them all the way around. Always. All right, I'm looking forward to your radar next, Crystal.